Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. I'm wearing a Giants cap in this video in which I'm going to talk about the New England Patriots. Why? Because sometimes when I make a video, people in the comment section say, Hey, Dwyer has an agenda. <laughs> Dwyer has a bias. He's trying to hide it from us. you got to be kidding me. I think I'm the most obvious person on the net here. You know I'm about the New York Giants. Let's be serious here, right? When I think of the Patriots, I think of their last two Super Bowl appearances. Guys named Eli and Coughlin. In any event, let's talk about the flake game, right? And let me be just blunt here. I think the Patriots, well, in particular, I think Tom Brady uh, knew what was going on, just like Troy Aikman has discussed that the quarterback had to know, right? Too much effort is involved in deflating 11 of 12 balls. Way too much effort. For us to now believe that there was, you know, not a concerted effort to deflate the footballs, right? And just as I said in an earlier video, they've set it up so that everyone with any power has plausible deniability. Right? As I predicted in the earlier video, they're going to blame a ball boy. They're going to blame someone without power. Right? Well, just understand that the Patriots got a competitive advantage by using lighter footballs, footballs tailored to their quarterback's own preferences that were not permitted by the National Football League, right? There's a reason for the protocol. They leave you with just a two and a half hour window to do something foolish. The Patriots did something foolish, right? Now, in these situations, understand that the cover-up is much worse than the crime, right? The crime is terrible here. Make no mistake, the Patriots got a competitive advantage and it was illegal. Can we stop with the nonsense in which we try to equate, you know, breaking in a football, which is legal, right? Getting a little bit of the shine off the leather with literally changing the size of the football. They're, they're two different things. One's permitted, one is not. Right? Can we get rid of that hoax? Because that's really foolish, isn't it? Can we also get rid of the hoax where Bill Belichick tries to insult our knowledge of science? These balls didn't deflate themselves. The weather didn't deflate these balls. Folks, I would encourage you to actually look at the weather conditions for the Patriot Colt game. Right? The weather didn't deflate these balls. Understand, too, this doesn't happen to any other team. Right? There are no other games this year where people have reached a conclusion that because the weather was too hot or too cold, the ball somehow on their own due to physics gained mass or lost mass, gained air pressure or lost air pressure to fall outside of NFL guidelines. That's an insulting argument to make. Understand, Bill Nye, the science guy, found it to be not credible. Right? Bill Belichick really... When he goes down that road, he's losing credibility. Let's be real. So just understand, here you have a clear rule violation. Someone tampered with these footballs. Apparently the NFL has tape now, video evidence, that these footballs somehow magically left the locker room and then returned to the locker room in the two and a half hour period between when the balls were inspected and when the game started. 
right? So let me make this argument. Especially now that the owner has come out and has said he thinks the Patriots deserve an apology. Let me just say this, right? This situation is far more serious than any of us envision. Someone is going to get suspended for longer than expected, right? It might be Bill Belichick. It might be Tom Brady. Let's just say it's going to be much more significant than the ball boy. The Patriots had an opening where they could have, figuratively speaking, taken the air out of the story. All Tom Brady had to do at his press conference, all he had to do was say that he had a conversation with the locker room attendants where he talked about how he liked lighter balls and that that conversation may have been misconstrued by the attendant, right, to mean that Brady wanted the attendant to illegally deflate the balls. What Brady should have done is should have taken some of the pressure off of the attendants, pun intended, by the way, right? He should have tried to take some of the pressure off some of the attendants, because I'm sure Brady knows he's been dealing with lighter balls for some time. Right? So Brady has a clear preference in terms of the kind of balls he likes to use. And my point is this. Let's say Brady is surprised to hear that the ear was taken out of the balls. But let's say Brady privately knows that it's common knowledge in the clubhouse that he prefers lighter balls, right? Pun not intended, right? The point I'm making is simply, you know, Brady should have provided the organization and the ball boys with cover. Let people understand that, hey, folks did know that he liked lighter footballs, right? They did know. And Brady should also say, look, maybe because I'm the quarterback of the team, someone with a high profile, the attendants thought it was not in a wink type situation. Right? This way, if the NFL has an attendant talk about the conversation with Brady and the fact that he took air out of the balls. Or if Brady privately knows that this attendant, right, would be backed into a corner where if he denies taking air out of the balls, then he'd be lying, right? Then Brady at least would get his spin on the story out. Understand, we the fans already know that the Patriots were using illegal balls. We already know that. So what Brady would be doing would be explaining to us, right, that yes, that happened. But no, it wasn't intentional, right, by me. Although with the organization, Right, someone did intentionally take the air out of the balls. Now, sadly, neither Brady nor Belichick has gone that route. Right, Brady would have been the best person to talk about it because, of course, Brady's the one who's handling the balls during the game. Right, instead, they've literally drawn a line in the sand. And it's a line that's going to cost them. Right? Everyone is saying, hey, I didn't know anything about it. Right? I have plausible deniability. I'm a sportsman. It would be unsportsmanlike for 
me to participate in any way or have any knowledge of air being systematically taken out of footballs. And understand, 11 of 12 balls were well below the league minimum. Right? The problem with that approach is while it gets you through this week and while you look like a choir boy, the league is seeing really institutional anarchy, an institutional lack of control. Right? As Aikman has pointed out, this is worse than Bounty Gate with the Saints. Because Bounty Gate didn't give the Saints a competitive advantage, right? We simply don't know how well Andrew Luck would have done with deflated footballs. I'm sure there are some guys who've played the Patriots who prefer a lighter ball, who didn't have the opportunity to have that lighter ball because they were complying with league rules, who would have done better with the lighter ball. Think about it. These quarterbacks are throwing into windows. If you have a great corner, if you have a Richard Sherman guarding your wide receiver, your accuracy is paramount. If the lighter balls increase your accuracy and you're able to complete just one 40-yard bomb, that you wouldn't have normally completed with a regular ball. Doesn't that have a major impact on the game? Let me point out too, if the lighter balls give you increased accuracy deep and the other defensive coordinator on the opposing team sees that you're having success with the deep ball, that might even change their defensive play calling. You know, one of the problems with the Patriot position on this, of a, hey, we didn't know, hey, it just happened to us, hey, it must be the weather. One of the problems is it devalues all of their accomplishments, doesn't it? Right? Tom Brady is phenomenal at home in cold weather. Look up his splits here online the next time you're preparing to uh, make a bet and you're researching it. Look up his splits. Right? That's a Patriot hallmark in the Brady era. Spectacular play in bad weather. Right? Let me say this. I wonder how many quarterbacks playing the Patriots in those bad weather games found that they had a hard time gripping the ball and would have loved to have had two pounds of air pressure taken out of the footballs they were using. Right? Had Brady talked about how, you know, he recently had a conversation with the current locker room attendants or that the current locker room attendants have only been on the job for X months, he would have protected the Patriot brand, wouldn't he have? Instead, we get the kind of denial that has us questioning the entire Brady era, don't we? Let me point out, too, according to reports, coaches from other games, at least one coach, John Harbaugh, may have figured out that the balls were underinflated. I think when we get the NFL's report, and make no mistake, I fully expect someone to get suspended for a while. In fact, let me sound crazy here. If I'm Tom Brady, I'm hoping that person is me. Because I wouldn't want to look like I participated in a hoax that got the head coach suspended. Right? I'd want to fall on the sword, so to speak. I'd want to take the bullet for the team. Right? If you're involved in chicanery, if you're trying to cut corners, who's going to notice us deflating 11 of 12 balls? Who's going to notice it? And then someone notices it. I think your best move is to take responsibility. 
right? Don't have the team suddenly go without a coach. Understand, Sean Payton got suspended for a year. Understand, the defensive coordinator for the Saints got suspended for life. That was off Bounty Gate, where maybe the Saints were being super aggressive, trying to collect bounties. But they were on the same field of play and didn't have a competitive advantage with regard to the use of equipment. So I'm not buying the Patriot Party line. Bob Kraft, you owe us an apology because some of your employees were cutting corners. That's what I believe the NFL's internal investigation will discover. We don't owe you an apology for your use of 11 deflated footballs in an AFC championship game. Right? This isn't taking it to the edge. Right? Taking it to the edge is, you know, doing what the Patriots legally did in terms of having Shane Vereen pretend he's an offensive lineman. Okay, that's within the rules. That's taking it to the edge. No, no, this is beyond the edge, right? This is, you know, taking thread out of the baseball. This is taking air out of the basketball, right? Keep in mind, it's even worse than that. Because taking air out of the basketball, well, both teams would use that ball. No, 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 this is taking air out of the basketball when you use the ball. Because your sh best shooters like a soft ball and then having the other team forced to use league mandated balls right it's an outrage don't be surprised win lose or draw well let's say win or lose whatever the patriots do in the super bowl don't be surprised if after the super bowl the punishment is decisive let me point out, too, that because Bob Kraft is a good friend of Roger Goodell's, as Seattle cornerback Richard Sherman has pointed out, let me offer a different point of view. Sherman feels that the Patriots aren't going to get touched by this. I think it's just the opposite. Right? Roger Goodell understands that his credibility has been under fire for a long time. Right? The Ray Rice situation didn't help his image. Right, The fact that the league is pushing for two extra games while at the same time claiming to be thinking about the health of the players hasn't helped his image. So the fact that Robert Kraft is one of his supporters almost mandates that Roger Goodell support a stiff penalty here right he wants to avoid any appearance of cronyism favoritism right impropriety so if these investigators come forward and say you know what we have evidence that the balls were deflated in other games also the argument that these balls deflated themselves because the temperature was in the high 40s low 50s for the Indianapolis Colt game is simply not credible and doesn't square with what we know about science, right? If that's the conclusion, then really, I believe what's going to happen is Kraft is going to face a much bigger fine than expected for a lack of institutional control, and I am expecting Tom Brady to be suspended simply because He's the quarterback, and the NFL will say he should have known, right, that these balls were being deflated, right? It happened on his watch, right? That's how I see it. One of my best friends in life is a Patriot fan. He keeps boring me with this storyline that the Patriots are owed an apology and that the rest of us are haters, right get real understand while i want my giants to beat the patriots every time the two teams play 
I don't want the Giants illegally deflating footballs to do so. Right? A lot of us, whether we like the Patriots or we hate the Patriots, really understand that the whole thing, the whole sport, hinges on its credibility. Right? There has to be a level playing field at the start of games. Right? It simply would be outrageous. It would badly hurt the integrity of the outcome if we were to find out that either the Patriots or Seattle used doctored footballs in the Super Bowl. Right? So this is a major infraction. This isn't the usual hijinks. This isn't people putting footballs in stoves that have already passed inspection and stuff like that. No, no, this is very different. This is someone sticking a needle in footballs to take air out of the footballs. Right? This is the kind of thing that allows Patriot quarterbacks to have a better grip on the football than their opponents. Right? Tom Brady has admitted to all of us that he likes softer footballs. Right? He's already made that admission. Right? This is as outrageous as it would be if the Green Bay Packers overinflated footballs for Aaron Rodgers. Right? The league's going to come down hard on someone after the Super Bowl. It's just a matter of the timing. Right? This is the kind of thing where someone's going to be thrown under the bus. It's going to be more substantial than the locker room attendant. And you're kidding yourself if you don't feel that this doesn't taint the Patriot legacy. Understand, up until now, you've had Spygate. And keep in mind, Spygate is a real bad cloud on that legacy. Really bad cloud, right? Because they had a team, the greatest show on turf, that they played in Brady's first Super Bowl that would have had a much higher profile had they won that game, right? That game featured a great last drive by the Patriots, right? You had Spygate clouding the outcome of that game. Now when you look up the Patriots on Wikipedia after this deflate game, you're going to see multiple instances of questionable behavior that may have impacted big games. Roger Goodell, I believe, knows he made a mistake when he ordered the Spygate tapes destroyed. Understand the Patriots then were fined several hundred thousand dollars now you have a situation where they may have cut corners in a different area. Let me point out, too, how bad it is. If Tom Brady goes out and has a Super Bowl where he throws two or more picks, his entire legacy is going to be questioned. People are going to say, wow, we know in this game he had properly inflated balls. Is this how Tom Brady is when he has to use regular footballs right so the Patriot legacy is being battered the Patriots haven't handled this the right way they would have been better off in my opinion coming clean and not trying to make it look like some rogue locker room attendant did something untoward or like the weather in a game that was played in typical football weather. Understand that Patriot Colt game wasn't in freezing temperature. No one's going to confuse that with the ice bowl. Right? The argument that the weather may have deflated 11 of 12 balls is laughable. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. I hope Brady reconsiders. And I hope he comes out with some kind of supplemental statement where he says, you know, come to think of it, let me say this. I never instructed anyone to deflate footballs. But I did discuss with some people how my preference was for lighter balls. And I did notice the balls felt 
great, right? But didn't realize that they were illegal, right? He needs to make some statement like that. Right, and he needs to, you know, I'm sure he knows who the locker room attendants are who are being heavily investigated by the league. He might want to say, look, with regard to the locker room attendants, right, they shouldn't be blamed for anything. The blame should fall on my shoulders, letting it be known that I prefer lighter footballs. Tom, give your team cover. To viewers, let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Thanks for stopping by.